Graphs and points plotted on the Cartesian plane are a very good way of representing information. So we need to be able to be sure that we can read the stories told on the Cartesian plane. Let's have a look at an example. Imagine that I have a group of learners who've written a test. And I take that group of learners who've written a test and I plot on a graph the number of hours they spent studying for the test and also the mark they got out of 100 for the test. I use the X coordinate to show the number of hours they spent studying and the Y coordinate to show the mark out of 100 for the test. So here's a plot of all my learners. You can see my learners have boring names, A, B, C, D, etc. Let's answer some questions about them. The first question, how many learners wrote the test? Well, as each point represents a learner, all we have to do is count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there were 11 learners who wrote the test. Who got the highest mark for the test? Well, remember, the marks are shown as the Y coordinate. So the marks, the highest mark will be the highest up. The Y coordinates are how far up you are. And so if you have a look, you can see that the highest up is learner K. And you can read off that learner K actually got 100 out of 100 full marks for the test. Who studied the longest for the test? Well, the number of hours spent studying is shown on the X as an X, the X coordinate. And so the further you are to the right, the more hours you spent studying. So we can see that learner I is the learner who spent longest studying. And that learner spent 10 hours studying for the test. Who got the same mark as C for the test? Well, have a look at C. It's that little orange dot in the bottom left-hand corner. Well, you can see that C actually only got a mark of 10 for the test. And who else got, where else do we see a mark of 10, right? Can you see that it's anywhere along that orange line? That is where the mark out of 100 is 10. Who else lies on that line? Well, learner E also got 10 out of 100 for the test. Okay, what if we change the question to be who studied for the same amount of time as C? Well, C only studied for one hour. Let's have a look at who else would have studied for one hour. Can you see it's that orange line that has everybody who studies for an hour on it, right? That, that is where you have only one hour of studying. Who else lies on that line? It's learner D. Next question, name the learners who got 50% for the test, who got less than 50% for the test. Well, where is the 50% mark? It's there. Who got less than it will be the learners who are below that. And that'll be C, D, E and F. And then finally, if there's another learner, L, who studied for less time than learner G, but got a higher mark than learner B, where might you be able to put learner L on this? Where could learner L be? Well, let's have a look. Where's all the bits where you have somebody who's studying less time than learner G? Well, if you're studying less time than learner G, you have to be to the left of learner G. So in that green area. If you have got a higher mark than learner B, you have to be above the mark for learner B. So you have to be in that red area. Now our learner L has to be in the green area as well as in the red area. So learner L could be somewhere there or there, or there, or there, right? Anywhere in the overlap between those two areas.